Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. I hope you have a great and wonderful day. I pray that uh, your children will be kind to you, that they would treat you right, that they would just spoil you today. Uh, today we're going to be in the, the book of 1 Kings, chapter 3, verses 16 through 28. And the title of this message is, Will the Real Mom Please Stand Up? Let us pray before we read, okay? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for our mothers, Lord. Those of us that have already see our, seen our mothers depart, we miss them dearly today. And uh, for those of you who still have your mothers, I pray that you would cherish them with all your heart today, that you would visit them, that you would call them, that you would just love on them like they so richly deserve. And Father God, I do pray that you would open our hearts and minds and ears and let us hear what you have to say. I pray that you would use this word of yours to penetrate hearts and change lives and that someone today would come to know you as their own personal Lord and Savior. Be with our men and women who serve this nation in the military. Be with our first responders, especially our police officers. Uh, this is National Police Officer Week and we just need to show gratitude to those men and women who wear the uniform of law enforcement. And Lord, uh, you just be with us as we go through this message. Help me to bring honor and glory to you with everything that is said. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now this is not your usual Mother Day text, so I want you to put, pay, please, please pay close attention. We're going to start with 1 Kings chapter 3, uh, verse 16, and read through 28. It says, Then came there two women, they were harlots unto the king, and stood before him. And one woman said, O oh my Lord, I, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also. And we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save that we too in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight and took her, my son from beside me while thine handmaiden slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give it my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Then the king said, The one saith, this is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead. And the other saith, Nay, but the son is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned with upon her son, and she said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child, and in no way slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and no wise slay it, and she is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. Now this is quite a classic story, isn't it? But do you know what one of the problems is with classic Bible stories? We often learn the primary lesson and fail to see the rest of the story. The incident is used of God to show he had given Solomon the wisdom and had that he had requested as king. And it proves that wisdom comes from God. The story also provides morals of motherhood from an unlikely source. 
And that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. Uh, three morals that we can learn from this story, the moral of motherhood. The first one is there is no such thing as a perfect mother. No one needs to be treated with more tenderness than our mothers. Perhaps no one is more caring and conscientious than a mother. Sometimes we are too hard on them. Sometimes they are too hard on themselves. The two mothers in this story, they were prostitutes. Their babies were evidently conceived under sinful circumstances. That alone should grab you. It makes you sit up in your church pew and take notice. So, why did Solomon, the king over God's chosen people, even take the time out of his busy schedule to worry about two prostitutes? These women and the sinful man who paid for their services were living out of God's will. But I want you to take note. Solomon was concerned about these two women because God was concerned about them. I don't have to convince you that the church should stand for moral purity. But I also believe the church should stand for forgiveness and restoration. Amen? These women were not living up to God's standards, yet He still loved them. Today, you may not be living up to God's standards, but God still loves you. If any of us had to wait for God to love us based on our performance, we would all be out of luck. No, there is no such thing as a perfect mother. And just like there are no other perfect ones in the rest of us. And if there's anyone in whom we should be willing to overlook faults or give a break, it should be our mother. Why? Because they've overlooked so many of our faults. We need to lighten up on mama. Just a little. And moms need to lighten up on themselves just a little. Moms need to laugh and have a good time. Here are a few good laughs for you. These are some excerpts from the children's letters to God. They are actual, authentic letters written by kids to God. <coughs> Dear God, I read the Bible. What does begotten got mean? Nobody will tell me. Love, Alice. Dear God, did you mean for the giraffe to look like that or was it an accident? Norma. Dear God, I went to this wedding and they kissed right there in church. Is that okay? Neil. Dear God, thank you for the baby brother. But what I prayed for was a puppy. Joyce. Dear God, please send me a pony. I never asked for anything before. You can look it up. Bruce. Dear God, please send Dennis Clark to a different camp this year. Peter. Dear God, I think about you sometimes even when I'm not praying. Elliot. Dear God, I bet it is very hard for you to love everybody in the world. There are only four in my family and I can't do it. Nan. Dear God, I didn't think orange went with purple until I saw the sunset you made on Tuesday. That was so cool. Eugene. Now these are authentic letters. And they should make any mother smile. And just in case they don't, then moms, you need to find something to smile about and make it a regular habit. Folks, life is too short and God is too good to go around frowning all the time. Now here's another moral of, of motherhood from our story. God answers, has answers for a mother's problems. Don't look for stress-free motherhood because it doesn't exist. From the pains of giving birth to the empty nest, to the grandchildren and beyond. Motherhood is stressful. 
Once again, this is not mentioned to discourage anyone, for there is good news. Our God is willing and able to assist moms with any problems that they encounter. God didn't give Solomon wisdom so folks would stand around the palace and say, ooh and ah. He gave his wisdom for a purpose. God not only loved those two prostitute mothers, he also loved that little baby in that story. Now God dispatched his wisdom to Solomon to save the child. And he has wisdom to spare for your parenting responsibilities as well. God can guide and provide for mothers in all kinds of life situations. Single moms, adoptive moms, stepmoms, moms with special situations. You name it, God can provide. Kids today have special needs. That's okay. God has the wisdom to give you for the task. He can teach you what to do and what to say in every situation as well as what not to do and what not to say in every situation. Like the mama who was tucking her young son into bed one summer night during a violent thunderstorm. And she was about to turn out the light when he said with a tremor in his voice, Mommy, will you sleep with me tonight? The mama replied, No, honey, I have to go sleep with Daddy. A long silence was finally broken by a shaky little voice that said, The big sissy. Here's the third and final moral for mothers from this story. There is nothing like a mother's love. The real mother in this story would rather see another woman raise her child than see it split in two. You have to be willing to give up some things to be a good mother. Personal sacrifice is an essential part of motherhood. It mean, it begins by sacrificing their own bodies by carrying the child around in their womb for nine long months. And no mother's child ought to get over that sacrifice that their mama made for them. Our mothers fed us, nourished us, protected us with their own bodies before we even saw the light of day. I don't know of anyone else who loves me enough to carry me around in their belly for nine months. But a mother's sacrifice it doesn't end there. They are like the energizing bunny. They just keep going and keep giving and keep going and keep giving. They give up sleep for a midnight feed. They give up personal goals to keep their children and help them achieve their own goals. Ask yourselves, how many times did you get a new outfit and mom wore the same old clothes. Or how many times she gave you the last helping at the supper table. We honor moms for all the giving that they do. And they remind us of God who is sacrificial and giving. God gave His only Son for a world of wayward children. That kind of love should not go unnoticed and unappreciated. We should respond to God who created moms with a great love and appreciation and respond to the motherhood the same way. Praise God for the mother that He gave to you. If your mother is still living, make time today to go and see her or at least call her and tell you how much you appreciate and love her. You see, God demonstrated His love for you and me by sending His Son Jesus to die for us. Jesus came and died for our sins so that there would be nothing in this world 
that could prevent you from having a fellowship in eternity with Father God. Folks, if you've never developed a personal, intimate love relationship with Jesus, do you know that if you died today, you would go to hell? Moms, grandmoms, you cannot raise your children and grandchildren in the ways of the Lord if you have never been saved. If you're 99% sure today that you're saved, then folks, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're 100% lost and you need to make things right with God before the end of this day. <coughs> if you feel the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart this morning. I want to give you an opportunity to pray and ask Jesus to come into your life and save your soul, to forgive your sins. So all you have to do is acknowledge that you're a sinner and pray and ask God. Call out to Jesus and ask Him to forgive you of your sins. You can do that by saying a simple little prayer. Father God, I am a sinner. I believe Jesus is your son. I believe he died on a cross for my sins. I ask him to forgive me of my sins and help me to follow him for the rest of my days. Forgive me, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it in your heart, Jesus heard you. So you say, Brother Bob, what happens next? You need to find you a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, Bible-teaching church and get involved with it. You need to find you a quiet place to read and study God's Word, to pray to God and listen to what He has to say to you. You need to follow Jesus in scriptural baptism. And you need to tell others what Jesus has done for you. Let us pray. Father God, I pray that if anyone accepted Jesus today, that they would follow through, that they would find that church, and that they would get involved, and that they would just tell everybody that they come into contact with, hey, you know what happened to me? Jesus saved my soul. Lord, help them to be a witness for you, and use them for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.